In this video, we've been asked to find the values of all six circular trig functions, given only the value of one of the trig functions and the quadrant in which theta is sitting. So in this first example, we've been told that cotangent of theta is equal to negative 23 and that the angle theta is in quadrant 2. So remember that our six circular trig functions are sine and cosecant, cosine and secant, and then tangent and cotangent. So in this example, we have cotangent. The reason I've written the six functions like this is because each of these are reciprocal identities of one another. In other words, tangent is equal to 1 divided by cotangent, and cotangent is equal to 1 divided by tangent. In the same way, cosine is 1 over secant, and secant is 1 over cosine, sine is 1 over cosecant, and cosecant is 1 over sine. So what that means is that we really only have to find three of these trig functions, and we get the other three thrown in. So we're starting with cotangent. We can easily find tangent because we know tangent is equal to 1 over cotangent. So we can say that tangent of theta is equal to 1 divided by negative 23, but then we can just go ahead and pull that negative sign out in front, put our 23 down here, and say that tangent is negative 1 over 23. So we've already got those two knocked out. We have to get a little bit more creative to find the other four. To do that, we're going to remember that the angle theta is in quadrant 2. Remember that our quadrants here are quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's focus in on quadrant 2, and let's sketch a picture of that second quadrant right there. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, but we're over here in quadrant 2. And what we want to do is we want to draw a right triangle inside quadrant 2. The angle theta is always going to be sitting here at the origin, and this is our right triangle. Now the reason that this is helpful is because if we remember SOHCAHTOA, our little rule here which tells us that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, that cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and that tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, we look at our tangent function, tangent of theta, and we see 1 over 23, and we're told tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what that tells us is that we have opposite over adjacent. So if this is the angle theta, then the side opposite of the angle theta is 1. The side adjacent to the angle theta is 23. Now we do have to account for this negative sign right here. And the way that we do that is by remembering here that we're in quadrant 2. So in quadrant 2, our x values are going to be negative, and our y values are going to be positive. So 23 is out here along the x-axis, which means that has to be negative. 1 is along the y-axis, so that means that has to be positive. So that's how you know that the negative sign goes to the 23. Now that we have two sides of the triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. So here what we'll say is negative 23 squared plus 1 squared is going to be equal to c squared. Negative 23 squared is the same as 529 plus 1 squared or plus 1 gives us 530. So we get c squared is equal to 500. 30, which means that c is going to be equal to the square root of 530. So we can go ahead and say that the length of the hypotenuse is the square root of 530. Now that we have all three sides of the triangle, we can very easily find sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. So if we start with sine, remember that according to SOHCAHTOA, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of the angle theta is going to be equal to the opposite side 1 over the hypotenuse square root 530. So sine of theta is going to be equal to 1 over square root 530. Now this is technically the value of sine of theta, but we don't like to leave square roots in the denominator, so we do want to go ahead and rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 530 over root 530, which is going to leave us with square root 530 over 530. So that's the value of sine of theta. And then remember, cosecant of theta is just the reciprocal. So we can say cosecant of theta is going to be equal to, and then we can just flip this value upside down. So instead of root 530 over 530, we're going to say 530 over 
root 530. But remember, 530 is the same thing as the square root of 530 times the square root of 530. So we do that, and then we can cancel one of these factors from both the numerator and denominator, and we're just left with one factor of square root 530. Then if we turn our attention to cosine of theta, we'll say cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's the angle theta. The adjacent side is negative 23. So we get negative 23 over the hypotenuse, which is square root 530. We rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 530 over root 530. And the result is negative 23 times square root 530 divided by 530. And then secant is just going to be the reciprocal. So secant of theta is going to be equal to, we could flip this upside down. So we're going to get 530 over negative 23 root 530. And then we remember that 530 is the same as root 530 times root 530. We get one of each of these factors to cancel and we're left with square root 530 over 23, and then just for cleanness, we'll bring that negative sign out in front. Now, if we want to summarize our findings, we can say sine of theta is equal to square root 530 over 530, that cosine of theta is equal to negative 23 square root 530 over 530, that tangent is equal to negative 1 over 23, that cosecant is equal to square root 530, that secant is equal to negative square root 530 over 23, and that cotangent is equal to negative 23. Now we'll do one more example. This time we have tangent of theta is equal to square root of 10, and that the angle theta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. Well, if we look at a unit circle, we know that the angle pi is here, and the angle 3 pi over 2 is here. So we know that the quadrant we're in is this quadrant here, quadrant 3. So this is in quadrant 3, and we have tangent of theta is equal to 10. So if we go ahead and we draw a picture, of quadrant three, like this, and we draw our right triangle where theta here is the angle at the origin. This is 90 degrees. Remember, we can basically think of this as tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 10 divided by one, so root 10 over one. And we know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from the angle theta, the opposite side is square root 10, and the adjacent side is one. So the measure of that side is one. Now we're in quadrant three, where both x and y are supposed to be negative. So both of these values are going to be negative, which makes sense because we get negative square root of 10 divided by negative 1. Those negative signs cancel. We're left with positive square root of 10 for tangent of theta. But with this information now, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find the length of the hypotenuse. So in that case, we have negative root 10 squared plus negative 1 squared is equal to c squared. So here our negative signs are going to cancel. Root 10 times root 10 is 10. Again, our negative signs will cancel. 1 times 1 is 1, so we get plus 1 equals c squared. c squared is equal to 11, or c is equal to square root of 11. So we have here square root of 11. Now, in order to find sine, remembering that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, we take the angle theta, we do the opposite side, which is negative root 10, divided by the hypotenuse, which is square root 11. So we go ahead and say sine of theta is equal to negative root 10 divided by root 11. In order to rationalize that denominator, we want to multiply by root 11 over root 11. That's going to be equal to negative 10 times 11 is 110, so root 110 over 11. Now if we want to find cosecant, it's reciprocal. We can say that cosecant of theta is just the same value turned upside down, so negative 11 over square root 110. To rationalize the denominator, we multiply by root 110 
over root 110, and we end up with negative 11 root 110 over 110. Of course, if we want to reduce this fraction to its lowest terms, we can divide 11 by 11, and we're just left with 1. We can divide 110 by 11, and we're left with 10. So the result then is negative root 110 over 10. Now we need to find cosine, which we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of the angle theta is the adjacent side, negative 1. Cosine of theta is negative 1 over the hypotenuse, which is root 11. So we'll say times root 11 over root 11, and the result then is negative root 11 over 11. To find secant, we'll take the reciprocal, so secant of theta is going to be negative 11 over root 11, but we remember that 11 is the same thing as square root 11 times square root 11, and then we get a factor of square root 11 to cancel from the numerator and denominator. So secant of theta is going to be negative root 11. And then finally, we save the easiest for last. We already know that tangent of theta is square root 10. So tangent of theta is equal to square root 10, which means that cotangent of theta is equal to the reciprocal of that 1 over the square root of 10. But then we rationalize, and we get square root 10 over 10. And so we can call cotangent of theta root 10 over 10. And that's how knowing just the value of one trig function and the quadrant in which theta lies, along with the Pythagorean theorem and your Sokotoa trick, can you find the values of all six circular trig functions. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.